Hey everybody, Captain Foley back with you today for another review. Today we're taking a look at this thing, the Playmobil Enterprise. Um, I apologize for the length of this video, but I wanted to get everything I could in about this ship. Um, I made a video earlier talking about pre-release, before this was released, of whether this was worth it or not. Um, my conclusion was probably not worth the money, uh, but th that was like $500 US, $700 Canadian. So I kind of made up my mind that it wasn't worth that and left it at that, made a video, got 31,000 views and Playmobil emailed us and said, we'd like, we appreciate your candid review, but we'd like you to, like to send you the ship and so you can do a review and unboxing of it, have it in hand. So I accepted, have it here and it's been taking take me two days to do this review. Um, it's full of the whole unboxing, the building of it, um, all the features, and our conclusions. Um, my conclusion, and I also got Sylvia in here as well to give her thoughts on this. So, anyway, this is the video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you soon. Captain Foley back with another Captain's Log. Today we're going to be taking a look at something that we're going to be doing an unboxing. Uh, a little while ago on this channel I made a video talking about the Playmobil Enterprise that was coming out. Was it worth the cost? And my overall interpretation was no. This thing cost about $500 US, $700 Canadian. So I didn't think it was, I thought it was too pricey to be a toy and not collectible enough to be a collector's item. Um, so anyway, uh, long story short, Playmobil actually emailed me because on the channel, the, the video was a bit of a runaway hit. It was about 31,000 views on that one where my, my opinion was that it's not worth the money. Playmobil emailed me and said they wanted me to take another look at this thing with it in hand, do an unboxing and a live review or a, a review for, for you guys to let you know whether it's worth the cost. I was kind of flabbergasted, I was floored, I didn't know what to think, I was very much surprised. And sure enough, it came. They sent it and I've got it in hand right now. So we're going to take a look at it, so we're going to unbox it, take a look at all of its features, its functions, its playability everything about it and do a detailed review. At the end, I'll probably have Sylvia come in and <laughs> get her opinion on it because I don't want to be the only one here saying that, you know, it might not be worth the cost. Um, I was just surprised they sent this. This is $700 Canadian and they, they just sent it out to me. So thank you very much Playmobil for that. I really appreciate that. Um, let's, you know, get into it and see exactly what we have going on here and what we think about it. Um, this is going to be an interesting video, it might be a little longer, we're going to look at some of the Bluetooth features of it, all the light up features, the augmented reality that it's got. Uh, we're going to take a look at all of that and then at the end come to the consensus of whether or not it is actually worth the money. <sighs> so I never thought I'd be in this position but here we go guys, let's go take a look. Okay guys, just for the sake of space, we're going to do this in the library. I know you guys seem really far away. Um, I'm going to have close-ups and stuff of everything I'm doing here um, that I can put in the video so you guys can see. But I wanted to show you guys the box and the flip-up part here as well. Um, it's got a lot of really good details there. Uh, so the inside of the box has the bridge, engineering, uh, the UC USB-C port, original sounds, light effects, and then on the bottom here it's got that needs three AA batteries, a picture of the, the thing with all the parts that can come off, and then a little window here that has James T. Kirk, Mr. Spock, Dr. Leonard, uh, Leonard McCoy, and Uhura, and then uh, not in Windows is Montgomery Scott, Pavel Chekhov, and Hikaru Sulu. 
Um, on the front of the box, you've got this here, a great picture of the Enterprise. Uh, on the top of the box, you got the Enterprise kind of doing its, its thing, uh, flying away. On the sides, on one side, this side here, you've got a nice shot of the Enterprise coming right at you. The other side is just blank, essentially. Um, there's a little bit of legal stuff there. And then on the back of the box, um, back of the box here, it's got a great shot of the ship. And it's uh, USS Enterprise. It's got some scenes from the show. Uh, the number 70548, uh, ages 10 plus. And uh, you got all the characters at the bottom there. You got the picture of it hanging uh, from the ceiling, which is something I might do with this, depending, because it is quite large. And uh, you've also got the Bluetooth 4.0 stuff. Uh, the bottom of the box, flip this thing over here. There's the bottom of the box there. Here's a close up for you guys. Um, and it shows um, all of the, f everything you get in here, all the characters, all the phasers, tricorders, the seats, the tribbles, the, the display stand. Um, the hanging equipment, the, the plaque, the ship itself, um, that's all here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the bottom of the box is really nice, actually. Um, so, anyway, so that's it, guys. We're going to start opening this thing up and taking a look at what's inside here and whether or not this is worth the, the cost, the price. Um, don't know what else to say. Um, let's just get into it. Thank you, Playmobil, uh, for sending this my way. Um, I'm going to have to go get some scissors, so hold on a second. This view might work a little bit better. So here is the box, as you can see. There you got all the figures in the window there. Um, you can't really see the upper flap here, but that's okay. Um, here's the top box, the Enterprise doing its swoosh, here's the back of the box, there's the side of the box there, that's a really nice shot of the Enterprise, and um, <clears throat> the bottom of the box, which of course is upside down, there we go. So, just want to show you that. So, honestly, packaging is on point. The packaging is good. So, let's get this thing open. And here there's a little box in there, which is where the figures are kept. second I'll get into that. Alright, so we just opened this instead of peeling it off. I didn't want to wreck the box. I don't think I made it already, but pulled out a tray. And you got your figures. You got Kirk with a phaser. You got Spock with his tricorder. McCoy with what I mistakenly said was a universal translator the first time around. It's not. It's his hypo spray. And we got Uhura, who has a little ear and mouth piece there. So that's those guys. I'm going to put this tray back in there. Off to the side on the floor. So, here's all of this. I thought there was an instruction booklet. I guess not. So these are all the individual boxed components. So there's your 
master stand. Nice big delta. And the top of your saucer. Minus this these pieces, these clear pieces, but let's put that down here. I'm not a fan of the way this box opens, honestly. But. So here's all your stickers and um, little attachment pieces for holding the ship together. And I'm noticing here the view screen, the view screen sticker of the D7 is actually lenticular. So when you move it, the, the D7 moves closer, which is really, really cool. So we're going to put that to the side right now. It's in here. All right, here we got the... Oh, well, look at that. There is the uh, navigation, or the astro astrogator with the buttons. And on the bottom is your speaker. And then a cord that will plug into whatever that plugs into. We've got this component, which is the USB-C thing that goes, will go into the side. And there's the plugins there. It looks like phone jacks. Lifting this out, we got some more cables. More cables there. And we also got the dilithium crystal chamber. Zard caps. So those are the. Those are obviously where things get plugged in there. So here's the hanging elements. Upper bridge displays. A bag full of random parts, railings. Reflector dish, helm console, rent, uh, engineering parts, all of the chairs and dilithium crystals. And then here's the rest of the figures. Scotty, Chekhov, you know, uh, Sulu are in there, along with some different bridge pieces, the bridge scanners, and some little clear bits. There's your impulse engine deck. This is a lot of assembly. For this. Uh, some clear parts, which I assume are for the stand. The turbo lift alcove. First we've got the secondary hull here. This is the part that comes away. And then this is where the USB port will go once we do that. Now there is the saucer. We gotta put the bridge in there. There's the bottom. The registries. This is what I'm not a fan of is the shape overall. But that's okay. Clear part for the base. A warp nacelle. And the other warp nacelle. stand pieces and your struts. So there we go, that is that. So, now we gotta do some assembling. So, let me uh, 
and get started on that. Aha! So there was an instruction manual. I had set it to the side. So we're going to go through this now and show you guys what's involved here. You got the, the ship and the, the figures. There's all the features we've talked about and instructions in a few different languages. Figures. And the assembly instructions. Which I'm going to do all this off screen and uh, let you know how it goes. But I just want to give you guys a look at the instruction manual before I get into all that. Lots of stick, there's lots of components that go into this thing. I never want to disassemble this. I don't even know if you can. Helm console. Putting that in. Railings. It's even got you gotta measure something by the looks of it. Oof. A supplementary thing because looks like they forgot to tell you that you need the whatever that is, the dilithium crystal thing. There's a added thing there that should be right there. But the dilithium has to be in the chamber for it to work. That's all they've added there. They've added the exclamation point and the, that it has to be turned the right way as well. So that's important to know. I was probably right about the turbo lift thing being lenticular because the view screen is. It was one of the guesses I had when I was looking at it earlier. So. Out the bizarre collectors. This is going to take longer than I anticipated. Here's the parts lists. That talks about torpedoes, alarm, and warp with the different buttons. Legal stuff. These, this is the instructions for hanging it by the looks of it. <clears throat> all right, and then Spock looking all heroic there. So, yeah, anyway, um. We're going to get into building this right now, and I'll see you guys soon. So starting assembly here, but one of the first things is this lenticular um, view screen which is super cool I really like that so good job on that so that's going in first the first thing to do so yeah before I start butchering the sticker sheet I wanted to show you guys got all the nice little consoles and displays there really great stuff um, and as well. So I mean that looks pretty good. That's the first sticker sheet. Uh, the second one is this one. You've got the Starship class plaque there. And that one as well. Oh, 
also has this little one, which I don't know where this goes yet, so keep that in mind. We've got a lenticular um, moray. That's a moray. So, I mean, a lenticular moray pattern for the science station. That's actually really cool. Ooh, even the, even the engineering one is 3D effect, so it looks like, depending where you're standing, it looks, changes the view, which is really neat. And I was right. The turbo lift doors are lenticular. So lots of great lenticular stuff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, anyway, um, I'm continuing on with this now. So. so there we go. We got step one done, which was putting in the view screen and these stickers, putting on these white stickers. And also the impulse engine stickers there. So that's step one. So the next step is <clears throat> all of the stickering of all of these. Not these yet. Oh yes, these two. These all go on here. And both of these sides are the same, with the same indents. So here we go. All right, so one side done. This is the port side of the bridge, because you start with engineering here and it goes all the way through. And I gotta say, the display screens on here, they're all accurate, exactly how it should be for engineering, even the controls. So, awesome job, them. And I gotta do the other side, which is of course, science and communications and everything. So, here we go with that. All right, so the other side is done too, and again, pretty accurate as far as the readouts and displays go. It's really nice. You got the Moyer, Moyer effect there. Um, not exactly in the right spot, but it's kind of a shortened bridge, so I mean it's going to be what it is. Uh, next up is putting the little view, view, view uh, say it again, next up is putting those little viewers in there. Uh, so we'll do that now. So now they have the little viewers in there. There doesn't appear to be any sticker for the viewers though, so um, yeah, it is what it is. So, there we go. I think I got these on the right way. Yep. They just snap in, so... So the next step is the upper decks here. Um, with putting these in. So we're going to get to those right now. All right, so those are done. As you can see, those displays there, and the other side as well. I gotta say, these stickers are awesome. <laughs> I'm a sucker for any kind of L cars or, or computer thing uh, from Star Trek, and these are really exciting. So, all right, so now um, it's time to put these consoles in. And um, so I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so the next step was to obviously snap those in. So those are in now, both sides. Also the navigation lights. I gotta say, where's the clear one? I gotta say, not super impressed with the instructions. They don't tell you what bag this is in. These two were in one bag. This was in a completely different bag that took me forever to find. So I don't know why they just didn't include those in the same bag. Or give you, actually tell you which bag they should be in. Um, but anyway, that's all right. Moving on. More stuff to do. So this is putting this thing in which I guess is a cell phone holder. This thing boasts a cell phone holder apparently and somebody said it might be the view screen thing. I mean, if that's what it is, I don't know if I like that. But anyway, um, and then there's like a clip thing for back here. 
and then we got to sticker up the bottom of the saucer so and the sides with all the window detail decals so I'll be back in a minute okay I think I figured that this thing is actually just storage for stuff probably no clear instructions so don't know all right so all the stickers are on the bottom here you can see I got the eyebrows on these ones here all done now there are clear light navigation lights there there's also these ones here which are fine the instructions only tell you about the ones on the side though well, I guess it does say times four but it doesn't show them putting them in here where they're clearly already in there so you have to figure that out on your own but I guess that's the times four there so maybe I'm just an idiot no I said I'm an idiot um, the stickers here, um, they're very unclear as to which way they should go. Um, these ones, I actually put this one on backwards or upside down um, because I didn't realize it at the time, but I've since gone back and fixed that. So the instructions are not super clear about where certain stickers or how certain stickers go on. Little pet peeve. I'm a big sticker nut. I like things to be straight. My OCD demands it. So... But anyway, we're on to the next step, which is using a tool that we got here and doing some secondary hull work. So we're going to get into that. I'll show you guys what's up next. There it is there. So we're going to do that, and I'll be right back. So these things sit in, but they don't fit in very well. We got like this screwdriver thing, you put that in there and you just push it till it snaps in. So again, not super clear with the instructions here, unfortunately, but there you go. All right, so just put the deflector on, as you can see, got these red things snapped in here. Now it's time to do the saucer attachment. So this is not a saucer separation, this is a saucer attachment. Got to put it in to hear a click. So that's okay. That was interesting to say the least. So click, click, yes. Is there something else? That's not very. Not very good attachment points. Okay, just so that's it. Oh, there we go. There we go, now it's clicked. No. screws here I think screws and there are screws in the package but that's clicked that's what the next step is so it's gonna leave that for now and see how well yes see the next step is putting those screws in with a screwdriver so gotta go get a screwdriver and do that so that the secondary hole doesn't attach detach So here are the screws. Just gotta get those in there. And then go get a screwdriver. I mean the little one they gave might work. Let me see. It doesn't say that to use this tool for this. But yeah, it's not gonna work. I gotta go get another screwdriver which is a bit of a bummer, so hold on. Okay, literally hate everything about this because the way those screws are in there, 
can't just use a regular screwdriver and get in there. Um, I feel like these aren't going to be as tight as I would like them. It's kind of a really stupid design flaw. If you want my honest opinion. But uh, anyway, I'm going to try to screw those in and keep going. All right, got them as tight as I'm going to, but you can see them in there. They just, I did strip them a little bit, but it's still, it's going to, it's gonna make it sit okay. Um, really, really, that's not great. Like why can't this pop off so you can get the screwdriver in there? That just makes no sense, but oh well. So next up, it wants me to mess with the base and get the base together, so. I'm just gonna do that. Doesn't seem super secure. Snapped in. I guess it is. It's fine. So now it wants me to put the ship on here. Oops. There are little slots in the bottom of the saucer, right there and there. And of course, the two holes in the bottom of the secondary hull. So those. Holes and slots line up here. You can see there how they slot in. It's really hard for me to see the viewfinder right now, but there we go. Let me see if I can tilt it. That's a bit better right there. All right, so that's that. Uh, on to the next step, which is building the helm console and captain's chair. So that's the next step right there. And then putting that stuff in the fridge. All right, so the helm and navigation console is done. And I gotta say, you know, I play Star, uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew and those buttons are super accurate so that's awesome. So now it's on to the captain's chair and captain's chair done. Now I gotta put the captain's chair and the helm console onto the base for them. All right so snapped on there that looks really good. These are the actual buttons you press for the uh, uh, warp and red alert and whatever else. So we got the captain's chair there. This is all the components in there as well. So, it's telling me to put that in now and put this cable through this hole, which feeds down through the neck. So, 
Okay, so that's that in. Yeah, pull it through the bottom there. Now it's time for railings. I'm just gonna snap these railings in and uh, check right back in with you. All right, so railings are assembled. They're gonna go in right now. Put in nice and snug. Running out of light, this is later in the day than I expected to be doing this, as this is a much more complicated build than I thought it was going to be. So, so I'll leave this on the stand here. Next is the pylons. I'm going to be stickering up the pylons and adding the connect connectors there. So, all right. So this is some shit that I don't like. You got to push these wires through the struts and. That one went fairly easy, actually. But the uh, first one wasn't that easy to do. So, anyway, we've got that. And now we got to put these through here. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Hold on. these through there so they come out through the secondary hole here oh, that's the right one then we gotta So now there's the battery compartments. Um, so we're on the battery compartment stage. You gotta put batteries in and slot in the dilithium crystal in the proper way into the ch crystal chamber. So I'll see you in a minute, guys. All right, guys, the lighting might have changed a little bit because I started this in the afternoon and expected to be done relatively quickly. I didn't think it would be this complicated, but anyway, here we are. Um, so I'm going to finish it tonight and go from there. So I already got the batteries in here. I've got to put the sticker on now. It's the other lenticular sticker, which is this one, which is actually really cool. So I've got to punch these little holes out um, for the buttons here. So there we go. So I got the sticker on. Yeah. And I'm gonna do the dilithium crystal thing and come right back. So here we got the dilithium crystal thing and dilithium crystals. So I actually got two of these. So you gotta put that in. And it's gotta push down on this platform in there. Like so, there we go, 
Let's push down now. And then that slides in there. And that actually just engages this button down here. So we're not going to fire it up yet, but that has to be in there. So the lithium crystals have to be in there and the chamber has to be in for the ship to work. So that's pretty cool actually. Alright, now it's just moving on to some decals and stuff, so be right back. So there's the engineering station. This is a cool see-through piece that got clipped in there, so the light will shine through that, which would be cool. Sorry about the click, 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 but that's my dog. Precious, go. All right, so there's the finished engineering section right there. Um, now it's time to plug all of the cables in. This one's from the bridge. These ones are for the nacelles. So we're gonna do that. in these are hanging out there's a little oops there goes the deflector there's a little clip here that you got to make sure this is pulled all the way back and it's clipped underneath there so that's a thing but there's the secondary hull so we're looking good that way we get this thing back on the stand now there we go and uh, let's uh, let's keep going. Next engineering console, all done. Uh, next up is the turbolift alcove with another great lenticular, with another fantastic lenticular sticker. These stickers are actually really cool, and. Uh, I'm glad I guessed correctly when I was looking at it on uh, the images that that's lenticular. So we're going to do that right now. I'll show you that in one second. All right, so there it is. Got the plaque there. Got the Starship thing here, which is not the right color, but who cares? That looks really good. I really like that graphic, actually. Um, <clears throat> Now, interestingly enough, it shows on the instructions to put the plaque sticker there, but it doesn't have, it doesn't give instructions for putting that on, even though it's shown there. So, plus, unlike all the other stickers, there's no indents for the plaque or for the Enterprise thing, but eh, it is what it is. So that's okay. So now we gotta throw this alcove in. Oh, that's so nice. All right. Oh, and I gotta put this other engineering panel in right now. to the nacelles. The nacelles. So that is one nacelle down. So they had this sticker, which is one sticker. You had these ones, this one, and the inner one. And then the thing that bothers me, and I pointed this out with my other uh, look at this thing, this top part is dark gray, but they didn't bother making sticker for this part, which bugs me a lot actually um, but I love how this is printed on you don't have to worry about that as a sticker and this is also printed on again you don't have to worry about putting that on as a sticker so that's one of the nacelles done we're gonna move on to the next one so 
All right, so nacelle number two is done. Same stickers, obviously. Same printed details, but lining these stickers up isn't much of a problem. They stick on really well. Um, they look good. Just be careful lining them up, um, and then they go in fine. There's one or two I've had to like peel up, but you need like a knife or something to kind of get under it so you don't wreck the decal. But there's nacelle number two done. So now it's time to put them on and pull these wires through. So let's get into that. So you just wire that through. It's supposed to come out through the front here. Grabbing it's a bit of a pain. Come on, there we go. So pull that through. You're supposed to pull it out like that. supposed to snap on. Why aren't those snapping? There we go. Yeah, snapping these parts on is sometimes a little bit difficult, but it's okay. So we're going to try this other one now over here. And uh, we'll be right back with you guys. So next up, obviously, is putting on the Bizarre Collector Caps. <coughs> Which shouldn't be too hard here. You just plug them in. And then put them in a specific way. Sorry. It's plugged in and then why is this not come on in there? There we go. Put them in and rotate them. So again, just like a telephone telephone uh, cable. It's actually kind of nice. There we go. So those are both plugged in now. Uh, now it's on to some saucer decals on the top. So. see what I'm doing. The little indents that they have for the stickers are really nice. I do like that for sure. Um, so we got a seven. I know, Pug, you're wondering what I'm doing. Pug is here and she's like all confused. She's trying to help. So there's that. On the other side, you can see the indents for them right there. So let's get those on. Seven and eight. Okay. Over here. Right there. Ta-da. So that's 
that done. <clears throat> now I've got to put in the clear parts at the side here and the there's those parts that go to the side and then the, the one at the bottom here which goes in there I guess so I'm gonna do that right now all right so the dome is in snaps in same with these snap in really well very easily um, Finally, go on the top there. Let's see what's next. Oh, put it on top. Put that thing on. Okay. Secondary hull has like a looks like it's got a hinge, but. That's on. Now I gotta make the chairs and do the plaque. And that is a cell phone holder, apparently, right there, as you can see. If you swing that down, put your cell phone in there, which is weird because I was wondering where the cell phone holder was in all this whole thing. Um, but there you got the chairs. We're gonna build the chairs. We're gonna make the plaque right now and finish up the stand. <clears throat> so, be right back. So the plaque looks really nice. It's got these little swivel stands on the back. So you can set it up anywhere, essentially. Um, I can use it for another enterprise if I really wanted to, but there's nowhere to attach it on the stand, I don't think. It doesn't show that, so it kind of just goes anywhere, but it looks really good. So now it's on to building some chairs. And the chairs are really basic and simple. You got the stand. You got the chair, you just plug it in, and then there's a sticker for the seat, which we're going to add right now. So it's all finished, guys. Here it is. I present to you the Playmobil USS Enterprise. Um, a lot better than I thought, actually. But I haven't turned on the lights yet. I haven't tried anything, so we'll see. But here you can see it. There's the plaque. I got extra dilithium crystals, some tribbles, we got Sulu, Uhura, Scotty, there's three communicators that come with this set, there's three phasers, we got Sulu holding one, we got McCoy with his hypospray, Spock with his tricorder, and Kirk there has a phaser, we also got the six seats. So we go up here, take this off, and you can see the excellent bridge detail. I'll get some better lighting and stuff in here in a second. And then in here, So as you saw, I was having issues getting this off. I didn't know how to do it. It doesn't really say in the instructions. Simple, just right here. Pop it off. All right, so we got the dilithium crystals in there and that is slid in. So now we have to do is hit this button. This is Captain James Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Dome slowly lights up. That powers up. That dome lights up. Those turn on.
So, I mean, that's actually pretty impressive. Oh, that's how that lights up. Okay. I'm wondering how that top dome lit up. Sorry about that. I had a fingerprint on the lens. So, there you go. You got that. <coughs> Look really good. They have multicolors in there. There's green and yellow and orange. Now I'm disappointed that these don't light up. I thought they did when I first looked at the pictures of this thing. I thought these lit up as well. They don't. So that's kind of a bummer. But that's still pretty cool. If we take this out. that. Um, if we put this in without the dilithium crystals, it just doesn't do anything. So the lithium crystals are here. So we're on no power, I guess. Oh, there's a red light in there. Shuts off. I think it has a three minute timer on it. So hold on, let me plug the dilithium back in. All right, dilithium is. All right, so let's hit the buttons. This one, it's photon torpedoes. Red one. Red alert. Put this back on. Let's see red alert in there. And then the blue one. Those go faster and faster. That's pretty impressive. And they slow right down again. So let's put the people in here and um, yeah, see what it looks like all occupied. Now there is an AR feature as well. I'll need to look into that because I want to try that out. So we got all the chairs in now. <clears throat> I'm gonna get more footage of this tomorrow when it's brighter out, but I still have to have Sylvia take a look at it and give me her thoughts on it. So oh, the triple lift door looks like it opens. It's really cool. Let's get those people in here now. Okay, stupid me. I had those two seats around the outside, but they belong there for sure, so. Alright, let's get the people in. Okay, I got everybody in the bridge. My only complaint is they don't really sit down so great, but that's plain the deal for you. Uh, Spock looks thoroughly pissed off with those eyebrows. Um, Ahura's got a little skirt thing that pops open, uh, so when you sit her down, it can come off, um, which isn't great, but there's everybody there. I want to take Scotty and move him down to the engineering area. I'm going to look at each figure and talk about them uh, individually as well, but also got the tribbles and the extra dilithium, which I think is a bit of a 
unnecessary thing. Got the communicators and phasers um, and that plaque. Now let's, they said that this was also storage for the phasers and communicators. So let me throw them in there real quick. So yeah, they all fit in there really well, which is great. Um, this also said it was a cell phone holder. Oh, look at that. My cell phone with the case fits beautifully. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. You can put a movie on there or anything for the view screen. Actually, kind of like that. That's kind of neat. A little unnecessary, but neat. And there's nowhere to really store the tribbles and stuff. I should just throw them in the secondary hall and close that up. So let me check out, out about this Bluetooth. So, for the AR, I guess we gotta scan the barcode, so... German, so can I select a different language? Play apps. Pirates. Okay, I don't see it there. Um, Hold on, let me see if I can get this in English and let me read these instructions real quick. So. Okay, still can't figure this out. It is still in German. They got the price there of 500 euros. So I typed in Star Trek to search. Um. Okay, the play. play. There is a Star Trek thing here, but you open that up and it's just. like a coloring thing. figured it out. You have to go to your app store, type in Star Trek Playmobil, and then you'll get this, which we will get. Um, hold on, let me go like this. Nope. So that's downloading now. Here we go, waiting. So now we'll have some augmented reality. Cool. And yeah, I'm going to finish up this video tomorrow, though. Um, I'm going to try out the AR tomorrow and stuff and have Sylvia uh, take a look at this thing and give me her thoughts on it to see whether it's worth it, because I don't want to be the judge of that. So while that's downloading...
play with the AR and stuff tomorrow and have Sylvia give me her thoughts on it. But that is it, guys. It's a Playmobil Enterprise. And it's big, too. I can show you how big. Hold on. So as you guys can see there, that's my 350 scale TOS Enterprise model. If I bring this thing in, this thing's actually bigger, quite substantially bigger than the 350. But here you can see, I can't really get back far enough because I'm holding it, but the nacelles are about the same length. Um, a lot bigger, like wider and girthier, you know, on the uh, Playmobil one. But the saucer is substantially larger, like a lot larger. So we'll get some more video of this tomorrow, but I kind of wanted to show you guys what we're dealing with size wise like that's a big footprint keep in mind too guys it comes with the hanging equipment so you can hang this up which for the size might be good I'm glad that they changed these because in the original pictures that I looked at these were black so I'm glad they made them clear now there are instructions on here in here on how to hang it you got to remove these the impulse deck and wire some stuff. You got to take the turbo lift alcove out and put the thing through there. We'll probably look at, look at that tomorrow. But for right now, for right now, we're just going to leave it there. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Which for you guys will be instantly. All right, guys, day two, and we are, I have it set up downstairs here, there's a, bit, a little bit more room, but the lighting's not the best, so I apologize, but here are the figures, here's the ship itself, and it looks really good, it even sounds really good, the bridge sound effects are very subtle and nice, and not offensive or in your face, like a lot of the other um, bridge sound effects that you sometimes hear, very subtle, very nice. Looks really good, but it is big. Bigger than the 350 as far as the saucer goes for sure. Um, the nacelles are about the same length. So you take the top off here and, like I said, sorry the lighting here isn't the best, but I think everything looks kind of cool. Love how the door closes there with the lenticular, it's cool. Station communications and then the lenticular view screen, too, where the uh, ship like moves in. You can't really see there, so. Um, so, overall, it's pretty impressive. We're gonna look at the, um, <clears throat> the app in a minute here, but. This should take off. That all looks really good in there as well. One thing I don't like is that. You can see the wires going to the nacelles. I don't know if I did that wrong or if I missed a step. But it plays for about three minutes. Then it does the hailing sound effect and says Spock says live long and prosper. And then it shuts off. So here's the charging for the uh, power port. If you want to power it with a UV, UV, whatever it is, USB C. <coughs> but fairly, fairly impressive, I gotta say. We're gonna have Sylvia come and take a look at it a little bit later in the video to give you her thoughts on it and whether it's worth it, because I don't wanna be the one 
kind of judging whether it's worth it or not, so.
So the figures are all kind of great. You got Sulu, you got Chekhov, you got a who are there. And like I said, her skirt thing is in two pieces so it can pop off. Um, just wearing like gray pants underneath or gray nylons. Uh, Scotty, extra dilithium crystal, a bunch of Shatner's toupees, uh, I mean tribbles. The plaque there, you got Kirk, Spock, and McCoy with the hypo spray. Um, so the figures are all pretty great, but I think there's too many tribbles and there's nowhere to store them. And I like that they give you an extra thing of dilithium crystals because that's important for powering this thing. Um, there, it's turned off already. But uh, I'll do the startup sequence, which is really cool. So you just hit this button. And you got the lower dome coming on. Kirk speaks. These power on. And also the light in there, which is quite ingenious that they have it shining up like that. And then the different, oops, that's the other thing. I wish that they would have had like pegs so you could stick the chairs in. Because you, you put the chairs in it and then you forget they're in there, you go to move it and everything rolls around. Here, that's where all the phasers and communicators are stored. Got a black button here, which is photon torpedoes. Got a red button, which is red alert. These lights come on. Doesn't last too long. It's not obnoxious. And the sounds are very subtle and subdued, which I really like. And this last one is to go to warp speed. So you hit that. Watch the bizarre collectors as they speed up. And there's a pug in the background. They're fleeing from a pug, but the pug is keeping up with them. And then they slow right down. So, all, all in all, the lenticular turbo lift doors are super cool. As are the as is the lenticular view screen, which with this lighting you can't really see too great. Well, let me get another light. Okay, with the light like that. Okay, with the light like that, you should see it. So the D7s in the distance there. And as you go this way, it zooms in and comes up really close. So that's really cool. Better shot of the bridge with better lighting. All the consoles are great. The little moray thing is neat. And that turbo lift opening is such a cool effect. Um, over here too. So I really like the sound effects. Um, we're going to need to get into the uh, augmented reality app in a minute here, but the bridge is pretty impressive looking, I gotta say. I do like it. Um, So when I first talked about this, it said it had a cell phone holder. I didn't know where, and I was actually kind of thought that was stupid. However, my iPhone, which is an iPhone 11 Pro Max, fits in there with the case on it and with my pop socket. So that looks really, really great for a front for a main view screen, actually. Um, one issue I have is when you get the people in here, as you guys saw, it gets a little bit cluttered and they don't sit down very well. So, so that's the shutoff sequence. My phone just 
ironically shut off at the exact same time, which was kind of neat, but it doesn't power your phone, it doesn't charge your phone, so. so let's look at the augmented reality app now. All right, so as you see here, it's right here. You just download it from the iOS store or the Google Play store. Comes in English and German. Got a disclaimer there. So you got AR Mission. Oh, you can see that. AR Mission Couch Mode, Command Mode, Fun Facts, and Settings. Now, these are all pretty cool. Um, let me turn on my sound. There we go. So we go to, let's go to Couch Mode first. Talk to the captain. Talk to Spock. Who was the designer of the M5? Well, that's Dr. Dave Strom. So. Turbo lift, go down to the engineering hull. Talk to Scotty. Let's see, what are the main functions of the M5? It makes the best coffee on this side of the whatever. Uh, it makes the ship really fast. It's supposed to handle the ship functions. Something with Bluetooth, probably. Oh, ship functions, obviously. little mini games and stuff here you get to like Oops. Oops, that's all. Let's go there. anyway yeah you get to play little mini games I want to quit this though um, and we're gonna go back so you can do things like that that was coach mode Now you go to command mode, and this is pretty cool actually. Hit accept. There's an on button there. You hit that, and it fires on. You also got the three main buttons on the bridge alert, photon torpedo, and warp drive. So you can hit that. Yeah, yeah, okay, shut up. You can run the astrogator, which is just different sound effects. Photon torpedo fire, bridge ambient noise, the Botswain whistle, dilithium core removed, which we don't want. <laughs> because, yeah, if you slide the dilithium crystal thing out, um, Basically, all the power shuts off, and it has the alert sound. Um, enter warp drive, which is the warp button on the bridge. This is where the... See, now the lights aren't coming on. I think because we removed the... Hold on, let me turn this off and turn it back on again. There we go. We won't remove the dilithium core because that's bad. Um, but you got demat dematerialization, which sounds like a communicator, so that's not the right sound effect. Alert. Okay, what the hell? Well, let's get this thing powered back up again. 
It only takes three AA batteries, so I don't know how long they last, but if you do turn it on, it turns off after three minutes, like I said. So Let's go down here. We've got Red Line Prosper, console lights, that lights up the bridge dome. Photon torpedo turns on and off the bottom, the lower uh, planetary sensor dome for some reason. The lithium core will turn that on. Warp nacelles. Photon torpedo twice will make the lower sens sensory planet dome, planetary dome um, turn on and off. And warp jump is where they start off slow and speed up. So those are all the functions for that, which is kind of neat. Um, so that was couch mode and command mode. You got fun facts here, which just gives you different facts on TOS. I gotta say, I love the displays here. Feels very TOS. All of this looks great. This is a neat function. Fun mode. So there's that. Then there's the AR mission. So an augmented reality mission. Oh, so I gotta align my ship. Hold on, let me get the camera off the stand here. All right, so there you see the Enterprise. We line it up. And then you see the people inside. Should I have left the top on? Maybe I should have. Hold on, let me put the top back on. There we go. You got Kirk there. This is... This doesn't make any goddamn sense. So this is not ideal, actually. Let's see what Kirk is saying. Welcome to the Enterprise Cadets. Uh, it's hard to do without the uh, tripod. Talk to Spock. just the same thing as the uh, mission, basically, who was the designer of the M5, so Dr. Daystrom. So yeah, I'm not a fan of the augmented reality aspect of this, actually. It does not quite work for me. Um. So while cool that it has the AR app, it doesn't really do much for me personally. The fun facts are kind of cool. The being able to power it from wherever you're sitting is awesome as well, especially if you decide to hang it, which is something I might end up doing with this. Probably not in this video, however. But I do like the command mode, I gotta say, just being able to power it on from wherever. Let's see the dilithium matrix light up there and then the ship comes to life so that's pretty cool so is it worth it is it worth seven hundred dollars sorry that's my phone 
is that we're $700 Canadian, $500 US. I still don't think so. As much as Playmobil wanted me to take a look at this thing and in hand and look at it. Don't get me wrong, it's super cool. It's really great actually. Um, really fun. I'm glad I have it. That being said, I'm not going to play with it. Um, I might fire up the lights and sounds occasionally. I do love that ambient bridge noise. Just listen. It's so subtle. It's not in your face like the QMX captain's chair is. It's not too loud. It's not too overpowering. It's just perfect. Um, it doesn't have a bunch of obnoxious sound effects thrown into it like a lot of ambient bridge ones do. So, honestly, I think the, the, the price point for this for me would be like 350 uh, Canadian at the most. I realize a lot of engineering went into this, a lot of design. Plus, with the augmented reality like that, so I'm going to turn this light off so you can see the glow in the warp core a bit better. Uh, a lot of design and stuff went into it. Um, you do get, you know, you get seven figures there, a bunch of tribbles, the chairs. I mean, I just don't really feel. Like seven hundred dollars is warranted for this thing. Um, in my opinion, it's just just not quite there. Uh, like I said, if if it's too it's too much for it to be a toy, and it's not. I mean, it is collectible enough for a collector. Um, should you have the money. Um, like I said, with the way the saucer is done and the underside of the saucer being kind of not proportionally correct, that's one of my big things. Like, if it was more accurate, hell yeah, it might be worth it. But the Bizarre Collectors are cool. As, I, as it turns out. But yeah, this dome here, don't like that. And I mean, other than that, it's a pretty cool representation. The stand's pretty neat. And uh, the, the option to hang it was brilliant on Playmobil's choice. I may do that. I may even do that for the end of this video. I have not decided yet. Um, but we will see how it goes. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're going to get Sylvia in here to give us her thoughts on whether she thinks, or what she thinks this is worth. She doesn't know the cost, so I'm going to kind of show her the features and stuff and see what she says, because I don't want to be the only one saying it's maybe not worth the price, because it just doesn't seem right to me. So, anyway guys, let's uh, see what she says. All right, so I got Admiral Sylvia here because I don't want to be the one saying that this isn't worth the money. No. What? <laughs> well, kind of I already, you already have said this, but. You're tainting me here. What do you think this something like this would be worth? Um. <clears throat> well, I would at least think like four or five hundred bucks. Just because of the size. Because of the size, I don't know everything that it does. Well. Okay. You got all the figures, seven figures, plus all the tribbles and stuff. That's very cute. I like all the figures and the tribbles. And I like he's got a little hypo spray. Yeah. And okay. you see it inside. Yes, that is very cool. Did you have to put all those stickers? Yes. That's a pain. Yes. But. But. So you say four or five hundred Canadian? Yeah. Maybe American? I don't know. What's the exchange rate like? See, my thought is... 300 to three, 350 would be like the most that I would ever pay for 350 this. for a 350 scale? It's bigger than 350. Oh. What else does it do? Um, well, there's an app it comes with. <gasps> there's an app? So we got... 
command mode where you can turn it on. Okay. How is that? Three buttons that are on there. Okay. Sorry about the dogs, everybody. Um, but you got the alert, red alert. Those go red. I can see that from over here, even. Uh, Full time torpedo. Oh. <laughs> and then warp drive. Okay, we're watching. Just build up. So it's augmented reality app with Bluetooth. Okay. That is pretty cool. And you can do this all from your phone. Yes. Yeah, so that is, so there's gotta be like a Bluetooth. So, okay, that does make it a little bit more expensive than you can do all of this. Um, but then you got like, run Astrogator, just different sound effects. Oh, hello. So there's a bunch of stuff you can do from the app. Uh, so that's kind of fun though. Okay, yeah, so like. Okay, hold on, I'm not done yet. Oh. There's an AR mission you can run. It's an art augmented reality mission mm. where you line up the ship with the silhouette and you like see the people moving around. <laughs> couch mode, which <gasps> we're on a couch. Let's let's use couch mode. Right. Which is the same thing. You just basically select that, and then you can talk to the captain. <laughs> so that's kind of fun, actually. Okay, so with the app and the figures and the size and the lights, um, does that change your opinion at all? Well, yeah, then definitely five hundred for sure. Definitely five hundred for sure. <clears throat> so five hundred Canadian would be a good price. Well, yeah, but I'm really bad with pricing too. Because <laughs> <coughs> it comes to about seven hundred dollars Canadian. It's five hundred US. Okay. Well, then I, I changed it to 500 US. So you think it's worth the price? It's very close. It's big. But it's a toy. I'm not going to play with it. You wouldn't give this to a kid. It's heavy as hell when you take it off the stand. And it's... Look at the shapes. It's not the right shape for the saucer and stuff. So is it really good for a collector that's not going to use it? Well, okay. Collectors don't really use their items, they display them. And someone who really likes big pieces that make a statement. But this, if I would agree with you if this saucer was shaped properly. But considering that they put the bridge in and they got this shape at the bottom, it just does not look accurate at all. Well, you're also a little bit of a ship nut. It's not... I'm talking about the average collector, though, right? Like I think it looks really cool. So you're saying the price is justified? It's close to it. It's it's it, it would be worth a lot. Hmm. It is big and shiny, and it's got lights. Okay, well we disagree because I I think three fifty is the maximum I would ever pay for something like this. As cool as it is. The augmented reality thing didn't work when I was trying it. It was a pain in the ass. I've got that on here that they've seen. And, I mean, plus it takes up a lot of real estate. You gotta, I'll probably have to end up hanging it up, which I'll do in a separate video, probably. That is cool, though, That is a that they give you the mounting kit for that. Yes. That is pretty nifty. It is, but we'll see. I gotta take a lot of this sh stuff apart to put the hanging kit on it. Mm. Anyway, um... So she says it's worth the price. I'll put it to you this way. If you wanted it and it was at that price, I'd buy it for you. Because uh, I love yeah, but you, when you got a, Thank you. <laughs> when you got a round two 350 model or you've got the Mega Blocks, which is 350 scale. Yeah. But looks accurate for much less money. Like they're going for Lego collector money here, and it's me. It's Playmobil. Like they've been around forever. That's true. But I, I don't know. She seems to think it's worth the price. I still. I think there's don't. people who have the disposable income and want a fun toy. 
and have the space. <laughs> I suppose. Well, there you go. Different perspective. Mm. Well, thank you for joining me. And long and prosper. Perfect timing. And on that note. Yeah. So I'll wrap this video up and then expect a few more videos from me. I got some ideas. I want to compare this to the 350 scale. Oh, that'll be neat to put that up. Uh, upstairs. And the Mega Blocks one. I want to put them all side by side. <laughs> I also want to do a video where I hang it. And so there's going to be another video or two coming about this thing. But this one is running long, so I apologize, guys. But thank you for joining me. You're welcome. And thank you guys for watching. I'm just going to do my outro. Um, right after this, it'll be a little while for me, but instantly for you guys. So, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi guys. Real quick before I end the video, I think for the price, I really wanted the lights in the neck and all these lights to light up. If all those lights lit up, as well as the ones on the saucer here. It would make more sense to be closer to that price. Let's just go down here too. Add a little shuttlecraft. When I do my video, um, I could do another video with this, with the 350 Round 2 Enterprise as well as the Mega Blocks. And I'm also going to look at the Franklin Mint 25th Anniversary Enterprise because it has a slide out shuttle bay with a little shuttle. So if they had one of those, that would have been great. The reason I'm going to compare this to the Franklin Mint one is because it's got the same setup. You take this top of the saucer off and you've got a bridge in there. Only it's an accurate bridge with the right number of stations. But that's the Franklin Mint for you. So I just wanted to add that before I ended the video. Um, some added... Added goodness would have been good in this case, I think. So this is an addendum, but I'm going to put it in before the end of the video because I've been thinking about what this could have added for the price. So anyway, moving on. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, is this for you? It might be. Is it for everyone? Absolutely not. Is the price justified? The argument could be made for both. Um, honestly, I think a, pr a price cap of about 350, maybe at the outset 400 Canadian would be maximum, but that's just my thoughts. So. You've been presented with everything that I, I, I know about this thing. You've seen the review. You make up your own minds. And I do want to do other videos with this. I want to do a comparison video with this and the 350 scale round two enterprise I have upstairs, as well as the Mega Blocks Enterprise. Those videos will be following. I also may hang this somewhere in the house. So if I do that, I will also do a video with the hanging hardware all included. Um, but we'll see about that. I just want to kind of get this one out there. I think it deserved a fair shake considering how polite Playmobil was uh, messaging me and basically giving me the opportunity to look at it. And I really appreciate that. So anyway, guys, hit that like button. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. And don't forget to subscribe to both videos, the Captain Foley personal channel, as well as the Trek Yards channel. And check out other videos by us as well. Till next time, guys. Bye.